welcome to Limerick Insider on Limerick.ie, the monthly video news service updating you on the events happening in Limerick City and County. In this episode, we take a look at what's on offer at some of the major tourist spots in Limerick City and County. The Hunt Museum, located at Rutland Street, is housed in what is regarded as the most distinguished 18th century building in Limerick. The Customs House is an elegant Palladian-style building, designed by the Italian architect Davis Ducart in 1765. During a visit to the museum, you can choose to explore the collection yourself or take one of the museum's regular guided tours. Viewing consists of artworks by Picasso, Renoir and Yeats, stunning artefacts from medieval times and weaponry and tools from the Celtic period. Hugh Maguire, director of the Hunt Museum, explains more. 2012, um, it, as with other years, we've a, a range of exhibitions. Um, there's always an exhibition in our main gallery. Uh, and then we have a, an ongoing program of education activities, lectures, uh, children's workshops, um, art programs during the summer, uh, art workshops on the first Sunday of every month for children. They've been going increasingly well over the years. And then we'll have um, um, a series of photographic exhibitions which will look at um, Limerick people in the um, middle part of the last century. And then we have a Chinese photographic exhibition later in the autumn and so on. So there are a range of activities like that. In the spring, we're going to have an exhibition on ranks. And ranks, as you know, was a, a major employer in Limerick in, in the past. So it'll be important to uh, try and establish the Hans link with the community by having that sort of exhibition here. It's like we're sitting here at the confluence of the, the Abbey River and the, and the um, Shannon. And this was a customs house historically in the 18th century. And as you know, with the customs house, things came up river, brought in here, and then sent out to the rest of the community. So the way I see that as the role we still play, it's a place where things come in and go out. And this is where people will come in and ideas can go out. So I'll be very much pushing the idea of um, the hunt as a place of interface, to use that sort of technical uh, museum -y type term. But um, I want it to be very much an open place where people can come in and go around and do as they please, largely. The Cathedral of St Mary, Blessed Virgin, has had a long and eventful history. The cathedral has seen many changes as the city expanded around it, and it remains today the oldest and most historic building in Limerick. While the cathedral is a beautiful and historic building, it is still used today for its original purpose, as a place of worship and prayer. Well, first of all, we like people to realise it's a church, first and foremost. And the fact that it's a medieval building does uh, encourage a lot of people to come and look at the arches, the architecture in the building. Uh, there are many points of interest. Uh, the burial stone of the king, the pre-Reformation altar stone, the stained glass, and our pride and joy would be the misericord seats. Over the past few years, tourism has grown, thankfully, and we probably put that down to musical events, choral events, orchestras, which now like to come here to St Mary's. It's a great venue uh, because of the acoustic uh, in the building. Well, we like to point out the, the west door of the cathedral, which is a, a Romanesque doorway. And the carving on that is quite, quite wonderful with the grotesque faces. And it would be a shame for people to miss that if they were visiting. Limerick City Gallery of Art is one of the leading contemporary art galleries in Ireland and home to an important collection of Irish 18th to 21st century art in all media, amounting to 831 works. In 2012, the Carnegie Building, a protected structure, was extended on three sides into the People's Park to house a new storage space for the permanent collection, a cafe, library, social space, a workshop area and additional public facilities. Um, Limerick City Gallery of Art is very beloved, obviously, of Limerick, and what has happened over the last while is an extension and enhancement of what it has to offer, including a cafe, but also this marvellous education area which looks right onto the People's Park. So what you have effectively is a way of 
gallery extending into the park and the idea of people from the park looking in, people in the inside looking out, um, and, and a certain amount of demystification that goes on. Often we wonder what goes on behind those walls of a gallery and actually within here you can see a lot of it. Also within the gallery are the means by which the collection, which is a, a very a strong municipal collection, can be cared for. So we have substantial um, controls over temperature, humidity and storage facilities. So that all goes to enhance what Limerick City Gallery is, both for the reasons of showing work here that perhaps mightn't have been able to be shown before, but also from the, the point of view of the visitor experience. Needless to say, these days when you go to a gallery, it's uh, the idea of having refreshments or the idea of having a pit stop or lingering a little bit longer um, is almost a given. So that the idea of the cafe being added on may sound like something that was an afterthought, but actually is pretty central to how a gallery operates. And so with the Zest Cafe and with this marvellous education hub, it is envisaged that this area would be one where you would have workshops and people uh, convening for all sorts of things, both to do with obviously art or less obviously, um, people coming together, community groups, etc. And um, as I say, we can take care of the collection more, we can show works on loan, we can do all the things that, to be honest with you, up to now would have been quite a challenge for them to do. But now it's a gallery that can hold its head up among all of the best of the galleries in Ireland and actually internationally as well. Limerick Civic Trust is a self-funding conservation society which initiates and undertakes a programme of projects for the general improvements of Limerick's environment in conjunction with local authorities, state agencies and other interested parties. Discover the oldest parts of Limerick City in context with the contemporary environment. Walking tours commence at the Bishop's Palace, the headquarters of Limerick Civic Trust. Here you will view the Hall of Fame Art Gallery by Dr Tom Ryan RHA. With many other sights to see, this is a must for any visitor or local to experience. We also offer a walking tour of medieval Limerick here. This really is a fascinating area. We're right beside King John's Castle. Uh, so much has gone on here, the three sieges of Limerick. To the left of us here is St Munchen's Church. It's the oldest church in Limerick from the 6th century. We have the Toll House there. There are not m very many Toll Houses left in Europe. Toll houses would have been very common, especially throughout the medieval times, right up to the Rena Renaissance times, to get in and out of cities. Last year we were lucky enough to finally obtain a piece of land uh, right here at the end of Church Street. This is Old Church Street, right here at the end of Old Church Street, and it is, a, it, it is now our community garden. And this community garden is very unusual because there are no fees for allotments, there, there are no dues or fees, and people can come and go as they please seven days a week. This room here you see is the Thomas Ryan room. He's a very prominent Limerick artist. He kindly donated these 25 sketches of famous Limerick people who've made an impact nationally and internationally. This room in the Bishop's Palace is open to the public Monday through Friday from half nine to half four. So very often people come in here and relax have a chat, read a book, or do whatever they want. So it's really a great asset to the community that, that it's open here to the public. It has been a year since the refurbishment of the Bell Table Arts Centre on Limerick's O'Connell Street, and Gillian Fenton gave an overview of the array of theatrical, poetic and artistic events that the Bell Table offers the public. The Bell Table Arts Centre has been here since 1981. And we've recently refurbished the whole building and it opened uh, a year ago actually uh, in November 2010. So we're in a year now and we're currently in the gallery space, which is a lovely space um, and has been used for exhibitions in the last 12 months and has been received really well. Um, and we have the auditorium space with 220 seats. Um, and it's a multidisciplinary arts venue for the city and we're based in city centre and that ranges from dance to theatre and drama, youth uh, film festival, which is called Fresh Film Festival. And also we work a lot with uh, Limerick Youth Theatre and we work an awful lot as well with um, you know, dance schools and secondary schools for their productions. 
And then on the other side of it, we work a lot with uh, theatre companies that are touring Ireland through funding with the Arts Council. So Keegan, the, the programme is quite varied and we normally put a programme out uh, every two months. And within that programme, um, the big thing that we have really been trying to push over the last few months is the uh, new digital cinema that we have here in the Bell Table. And we do a lot of world cinema in association with Access. So that's really been successful and we're really happy because the quality of the cinema and the digital uh, camera or cinema equipment is really, really good. I mean, you can always uh, look at the website because the programme changes uh, every single week. So we have tried to set up every Tuesday night as our World Cinema Night. But apart from that, every night is a very, you know, it's different. So www.belltable.ie is our website and you'd need to check that out and you can buy tickets online. So um, that, yeah, people, I know that people, regular patrons that come to the Bell Table would check out the website every Monday just to see what's on during the week. The historical exhibition at the Adair Heritage Centre takes you back to early 13th century Adair, outlining the history of the village and includes a reconstruction of Adair's unique past from the arrival of the Normans to the ancient abbeys of the Middle Ages. Adair's Heritage Centre offers many tours as well as a unique shopping and tourist experience. When a, a tourist arrives here to Adair, um, they, what, what they're looking for, number one, is, is um, to be greeted and be brought in and looked after. So here in, in the centre itself, we, we provide all facilities, hopefully, that the tourists will enjoy. And where possible, we, we do our best to provide them with um, as many amenities that we can. We direct them to the tourist office for all the information that's needed. Um, if they need uh, routes or directions or what's available around the village, that's where the tourist office comes into it. The, um, you, you can get the food, as Kathleen has said, here in the restaurant. And if they want to get little gifts, something small, something nice, the two, there's a gift shop here, the Abbey Crafts, to do fabulous little gifts. And across the way we have the, the Adair Woolen Mills, some beautiful woolens uh, that, that can be got there. Well, the historical exhibition gives you the uh, view of Adair as it was 500 years ago. There's an audio visual, it's about eight minutes long, and it covers the village as it was 500 years ago. We also have the history of the Dunraven family here in Adair. Uh, in the historical exhibition itself, then, uh, we, you have the story of the Adair poets, which is of great interest to people, and the history of the three religious orders here, the Trinitarians, the Augustinians and the Franciscans. And in the cinema, then, we have yoga uh, classes and chess uh, classes as well. And uh, it's available, really, to people if they want to. Yeah. Yeah, and book it for meetings or... We have historical meetings Society here. meetings here as well. Here as well. The Voynes Flying Boat Museum, housed in the original terminal building in County Limerick, recalls that nostalgic era when Voynes became the centre of the aviation world from 1939 to 1945. The museum has a comprehensive range of exhibits and graphic illustrations, where you can learn about the history of the flying boats in an authentic 1940s cinema, featuring the award-winning film Atlantic Conquest. The original terminal building, radio and weather room, complete with transmitters, receivers and Morse code equipment, are also showcased at the museum. The museum, the Foynes Flying Boat Museum, was opened here in 1989. Uh, we opened it really, uh, it was created to actually commemorate and to keep alive the story of the flying boats. Uh, Foynes at that time was the centre of world aviation. Uh, it was the first Shannon Airport, if you like. Um, Really, the, the, the purpose of the museum and the visitor experience that you get when you come here uh, brings you right back to the early days, uh, right up to the current day, shall we say. Uh, the visitor gets to experience what it is like to step aboard a flying boat as we have a full-scale replica of an actual flying boat uh, built to the blueprints that were given to us from Boeing. So they get to actually step on board, see what it's like to travel in the luxury of the day. Uh, we have a radio room where they can see all the technology that was used uh, during the era. We have a cinema which brings them right back to the early days, shows some original footage of the flying boat era. There's a children's room where they get to play on the flight simulators, um, lots of fun things in there for the kids as well. 
Um, and also Irish coffee was invented here. So uh, our newest exhibition is a 3D hologram that recreates the night that Irish coffee was invented. So the person gets to see exactly how it all began and how Irish co coffee has become more famous really. If you would like more information on any of these great tourist spots, please feel free to check out www.limerick.ie.